That was the best Raw ever. You may wonder why, but the reason is very simple. We got the intro, we saw the crowd, and it's boss time! My favorite time! The only time that matters because we love such a bitch! And you see Sasha, Lo Sasha, Boxing Rock Connection Sasha, Blue Hair Sissy Sasha! Hmm, how can we possibly have a better Monday Night Raw than the one that starts with Boss Time? I don't know, impossible. The other highlight is this team right here, and this will blow your mind. These are a few months of Dolph Ziggler's career. He returned to the WWE, he faced the WWE Champion, got a fair push, got buried by Goldberg, got buried by Miz, and now he's teaming with Robert Roode. I've heard he's making good money down there. At this point, just give the guy the Divas Championship. Psych, keep your dirty hands off my championship. I've said keep your dirty hands off my beautiful championship, you bitch. Another episode of Greatness of Raw, another late episode because I'm very busy and to be quite honest with you, I don't remember anything that has happened on the show, so... Uh, oh yeah. It's box time! Sasha Banks comes out of the ring to kick off tonight's show. You can even say she broke the fourth wall. I guess, kinda, except it kinda sucked. She talks about her hiatus after WrestleMania, and she basically said that she was disappointed by the way WWE treated her, and yes, she cried backstage. Yes, these rumors are kinda true, I guess. Natalia comes out to interrupt, and we got a brawl. I don't know how I feel about that, because I feel like it could've been done way better. Uh, first of all, all the attention was on Sasha Banks. They could have capitalized on that. Like, she should have just destroyed Becky Lynch or something like that. But it didn't happen. They basically used Natalia as a third wheel. And it's not as, a, as, ex, as effective as we would like it to be. And as a huge Sasha Banks fan, I would like to ask, what's up with Michael Cole? It's boss time! What's up with Michael Cole not being as enthusiastic about saying it's boss time? It's boss time! What is happening to you, Michael? It's boss time! It's funny how one of her lines in that promo is, Yeah, I cried. Yeah, I cried because I didn't get what I want. Yeah, I'm that type of WWE wrestler. I'm a mark for myself. How Sasha Banks was seen crying at WrestleMania at the locker room floor. I did. King of the Ring tournament continues as we got Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre. A very good match. I would even say it should have been in the main event. I've always wanted to see Ricochet versus guys like Drew McIntyre or even Brock Lesnar. That's an absolute dream match. And yeah, that was very entertaining and I was really shocked by the fact that Ricochet actually won the match. He hits his finisher from the turnbuckle and does another one from the top rope. So surprisingly, Ricochet defeated Drew McIntyre. It's kind of weird because Drew McIntyre was like my second or third uh, prediction on who is going to win King of the Ring tournament. And that looks great, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. So, in a way, I'm happy that Ricochet advances, but I'm disappointed that Drew is out. <laughs> we got a pre-taped Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman interview. And Seth basically asked, do you want to challenge me for the Universal Championship? And Braun said yes! So we are getting Braun vs Seth at Clash of Champions. I should also remind you that in the main event we are getting Braun Strowman vs AJ Styles for the United States Championship. So basically there was a possibility that we could see Seth Rollins or Braun Strowman with three titles. No, we got The Miz vs. Baron Corbin. It's one of these matches that I seriously cannot get excited about. I wasn't paying attention, but I do appreciate the ending. We got the springboard spot and we got end of days. Looked great, loved it, and Baron Corbin advances. All hail King Corbin. He's winning, he's winning the tournament. 
What can I possibly say? It's pretty obvious. <laughs> Look at that cute face. He's my king and I want to be his queen. We got Bailey versus Nikki Cross, in which Bailey wins the match with a flying elbow. What's the point of these matches? I don't know. Why would they use the uh, wild card rule for this? I don't know either. And we got this tag team tournament, whatever it was. It's basically a gauntlet match for tag teams. At first we got the Viking Raiders versus the B team. The B team got eliminated and now they will face Gallows and Anderson. We got a brawl and the referee basically disqualified them. Great stuff. Then we got Rude and Ziggler versus the Lucha House Party, in which obviously the Lucha House Party got eliminated. <coughs> Surprisingly, Rude and Ziggler actually won. I shouldn't say surprisingly because that's basically the reason why this is a tag team. Like I've said, it's pretty shocking how Dolph Ziggler's career is changing all the time. One day he's a challenger for the world championship, another day he's a complete jobber, and then another day he's in a tag team championship match. Like... His career is absolutely insane. To be quite honest with you, I kinda like it. I mean, Dolph Ziggler is not doing anything, Robert Wood is not doing anything. A lot of people are complaining that uh, two random guys who are not an actual tag team are facing for the Raw Tag Team Championships. This is disgusting. No, these, in my opinion personally, these are the best tag teams. A perfect example is Rated RKO. Like, these are the best tag teams when two main eventers decide to be a team and it always looks a bit more legit to me, I don't know. Then we got Sasha Banks versus Natalia, in which of course Sasha Banks won the match with her finisher, with the bank statement. It was fine, but the question I have is, how can she wrestle with a broken arm? Like, how? I get that it's not a real injury, but if, if it would have been real, you would be saying that she cannot compete and if Natalia was in a real championship match at WrestleMania, you would still say that Natalia cannot compete. Uh, but since it's fake and you all know that, uh, we're gonna put her on Raw versus Sasha Banks. Why not? She's injured? Uh, who cares? And we got another Banks statement after the match. Cedric Alexander versus Cesaro was another entertaining match, and unfortunately Cesaro lost again. And if I've heard that correctly, Cesaro is now moving to NXT UK. If anyone is watching. Is, is that a good thing? Maybe. I mean, he's not doing anything anyway, so... Maybe it's a good thing, but I guess I'm just not gonna see Cesaro anymore. I don't have time to watch NXT UK. But to be honest, I would be down for NXT Russia. So Fox Sports host Rob Stone won the 24-7 championship for a few seconds. And people are complaining. You ruined the prestige of the 24-7 championship. What kind of prestige are you talking about? People... Stop. This championship never had any prestige, that's the whole point. Relax, it's boss time. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode are backstage for an interview and Ziggler basically explain why these two are a tag team. Like he doesn't trust anyone, but he saw that Roode has that extra twinkle in his eye and he wants to win. And they will win the Raw Tag Team Championships. I sure hope so. And of course in the main event we got AJ Styles versus Braun Strowman for the United States Championship. The absolute highlight of this match was this referee bump like... Uh, a lot of respect for this referee. <laughs> and this was basically chaos. Like, uh, once uh, Braun got the chair, referee saw it and disqualified Braun Strowman. So AJ Styles is still your United States champion. And maybe that's for the better. Because we would get Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins facing Ziggler and Root for the Raw Tag Team Championships. And then we would get Braun Strowman versus Seth Rollins for the Universal and United States Championship. Clash of Champions, all titles are on the line, so we're gonna put them on one guy. So that was a very forgettable episode of Monday Night Raw. I was definitely not a big fan. I would give it 5 out of 10. And I'm reading right now that Becky and Rollins were not on Raw because they got engaged. I didn't notice that at all. I didn't miss them. Uh, I could do fine without them for like a couple of months. Anyway, so that is my review of Monday Night Raw, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, the great one peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.